Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Folks, only a few days left to get one of Lum and Abner's big 8 by 10 autograph pictures. They've received so many requests that the supply is almost exhausted. So if you're going to get one, I suggest you'd better hurry. All you have to do, you know, is to write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk. Then mail the wrapper to Lum and Abner at the station to which you are now listening. They'll send you a photograph right away, and they certainly are worth having. They show the old fellows, you know, both in character and as they are in real life. There's good old Lum with his whimsical smile and prized mustache. And lovable old Abner, just as you've always pictured him, spectacles perched way out on the end of his nose. So don't forget, folks, send in tonight before it's too late. This offer will be withdrawn by the end of the week. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday, Lum and Abner received a telegram from Squire Skin stating that he had sold their hogs for them and that he would return to Pine Ridge today. Well, now that Lum is sure of receiving the money from the sale of the hogs, he's gone ahead and ordered the statue of himself to present to the citizens of Brian Ridge. And is having inscribed upon the monument, Lum Edwards, King of the Hogs. <laughs> well, as we look in on our old friends today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store, eagerly awaiting the arrival of Squire Kemp. Listen. Uh, Granny, I just can't wait till Squire gets here. Oh, me neither. <laughs> if, if he got to the county seat on that noon train, he ought to be out here any time now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go get I bound you. He's got his pockets just stuffed full of money. <laughs> well, more than likely he got a check. You see, them big companies that way, they don't pay off in cash money. Oh, I just hope the check's good. Oh, well, it'll be a good check, all right. Well, if it ain't too late when he gets here, Lom, we ought to go right into the county seat this afternoon and get the cash on him. Well, there ain't no rush. We can go in there tomorrow. There's plenty of time. See about our luck for that check not to be no count. No, I wouldn't worry about that now. Wouldn't worry about it? Well, of course not. You mean just let them give us a check that ain't worth the papers wrote on and not say nothing about it? Well, no, I wouldn't want to just give them the hogs. No, I wouldn't let them put a stunt like that on No, them. sir. We'll just get right on the train and go to Chicago and make them give us our hogs back or the money was. Well, I doubt where we could get the hogs back by now. I don't get out get them back or fill that place full of pistol smoke one. Anybody that's low down and honor enough to take a man's hogs and give him an old count check, I ain't got no patience with Well, you. wait a minute, Abner. Wait a minute. I ain't gonna wait for nothing. I'm gonna get that money and know the reason why. Just because we're off down here in Pine Ridge and they're up there in Chicago, they think they can put something over well, on it. Calm yourself down, Abner. I don't want to calm myself down. I worked hard all my life. Abner, Father, will you sit back down? Back Abner, sit back, back down in that on. chair. One, you're the worst fella to fly off in the handle I've ever seen in my life. Well, it's enough to make a man fly off in the handle. How in the world you can sit there and not get riled up to him? Abner, just take that up now. Hey, up. Blame him. Got yourself worked up there to get trembling all over. Just look at you. All over nothing. Nothing. Abner, you're going to bring another one of them thinking spells on yourself. Blame now, just on just I... wait a minute. Listen to reason. I don't want to listen to nothing. I'm so dead and blame mad I could jump clean out of my clothes. Well, jump out of them then. Maybe that'll tame you down a little. Just wish you I had them. Be ashamed of yourself. Excuse them for giving us a bad check before we even get the check. Well, you said that it was... Huh? We don't know where the check's any count or not till Squire brings it out here. Well, who told me that? Nobody. You just got yourself worked up there to where you might not throw the transom over nothing. For all we know, Squire might have the cash money on it. Well, I hope he had. We've had enough trouble with her dad blame check. Whose check? Why, that outfit that he sold a hawk. Uh, well, that's better. Now, just forget about it. Never seen you lose control of yourself that way. Well, I've been planning too long. I'm on getting that money from them hogs. I just wait, wait, wait a minute. That's all right. Uh, I don't know. No, I'm a... It's so nervous. I ain't hardly myself today. Well, know. I'll answer it. I'll answer it. Maybe it's Squire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go over there and douse a dipper water over your head. Maybe that'll help you. Yeah, my nerves is sort of jumping. Hello? Hey. Mr. Got him down, so on. Now, this is, uh, this is him talking. Oh, hello, Mr. Crow. Oh, hi, You got what? Oh, well, fine. <laughs> It'll be here tomorrow, huh? Well, when can I get it? Oh, well, if you can put it up for me, I'll make arrangements to have the unveiling day after tomorrow, then. Yeah, I don't even want to see it till they unshiver during the ceremony. Yeah, I'll see about an hour's water dump. Oh, damn it. 
All right, sir. You have it out here and set up by day after tomorrow afternoon, and I'll go ahead and make plans for the ceremony. Ceremony. Hey, you see, I'm going to present it to the citizens of Pine Ridge here. All right, Mr. Krauss, I'll have the money for you when you deliver it. Fact is, there's a fella coming in today bringing me more money, and I'll know what to do with it. <laughs> All right. Much obliged for calling. Goodbye. Huh. Oh, goodbye. Hi, uh, Granny's Avenue. Mr. Kraut says the statue will be here tomorrow, and you can have it ready by the next day. Well, good. I can't hardly wait to see it, Mom. I just hope it looks like it. <laughs> oh, it'll look like me. I sent him a picture of myself by the mail carrier this morning. A picture of you by the mail carrier? But you want him in a picture for him? I said a picture of me by the mail... The mail carrier taking the picture into him for me. What's the matter with you today? Oh, I don't know. I'm still nervous, I reckon. Well, why'd you douse that water over your head like I told you to? Why did I... Well, I, <laughs> I forgot and drunk it, though. <laughs> well, now, you sit right quiet there. I've got some figuring to do here. I've got to make arrangements for them unveiling ceremonies. Yeah, uh, what do they do at one of them? Well, the uh, main thing will be a speech for me presenting the statuary to the citizens of Pine Ridge. Huh? You ought to have somebody there to access it, too. Well, I thought you were going to invite everybody to be there. Well, I mean somebody to make a speech. Thank me for giving it to them and all that. Oh, yeah. Let's see, who would be a good one for that? Well, I'd just do it myself if I was you. Well, I can't give it to myself and thank myself for it, too. That wouldn't look right. Let's see. Squire Skimp would be a good man for that. He's good at out loud talking, too. Oh, yeah. Squire can get up and talk for hours. Just all hands. Yeah, I'll see him when he gets to town. Yeah, he's a man. Yeah. I'll bet you he'll be surprised to death when he finds out how important I'm getting yeah. having monuments and m- myself and stuff like that around me. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, let's see. I ought to figure out some way to let everybody know about it. Well, why don't you just make an announcement over the party line? Yeah. Sure, yeah, I can do that. Why, sure. Yeah, and I ought to have a few hand circles struck off and pass them around for them that don't hear the announcement. I want a big crowd there. Well, I'll tell you what, get more people out there than anything else, Mom, and that's to have something to eat. Something to eat? Yeah, a barbecue or something like that. Dinner on the ground. Well, that ain't a bad idea. Well, I'm a good mind just to have a big feed down there and pay for it myself. That's a good idea. Well, <laughs> all you have to do is just call up Clay Foster and... Tell him about how many people you want to feed, and he'll have the whole thing ready for you. They all have good hand to fix up the eats for these auction sales to have it Yeah, there. that's right. I, guess I believe I just called Clay up right now. I'm glad I thought of that. <laughs> yeah, if you get Clay, I'll be there myself. He's the best barbecue I ever seen. And that's something I know when I see him. Hello? I see my barbecue. Clay? Keep my way. Uh, this here is Mom Edwards. Yeah. yeah. Clay, how much would you charge to fix up a barbecue for about three or four hundred people? Uh, day after tomorrow. Oh. Uh, that's the best you could do, huh? Well, that includes everything, don't it? Bread and all that stuff. Uh, well, I believe I'll just let you go ahead and get that ready then, Clay. Oh, about three o'clock in the afternoon, I reckon. Uh, right in front of Dick Huddleston's store. All right, Clay, I'll depend on you then. <laughs> Much obliged. Uh, I mean, don't mention it. Goodbye. You want a picture, huh? Yeah, said so you have a nice assortment of beef and pork and chicken for me. <laughs> it's enough for 400 people for $50. That's uh, 25 cents a head. Well, that's cheap enough. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I better make an announcement on the party line and start inviting everybody. <laughs> this is going to be the biggest day in the history of Pine Ridge. You know what that is? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give the fire alarm ring here. Well, I'll be sure and tell everybody that they're going to have something to eat so they'll come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> huh? Oh, wait. Hello? I mean, uh, just a minute, everybody. Uh, hold a receiver. I've got an important announcement to make. Uh, step up here, Mr. Smith. Huh? I want to change my voice so that I think somebody else is making an announcement. Oh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Smith talking. I take great pleasure in extending a hearty invitation to all my friends to be present at the unveiling of a statuary of that great and noble citizen, Mr. Lameter, King of the Hall, which will be held day after tomorrow afternoon out by the water and trough in front of Dick Hudson's store. I'm going to make a talk just before they uncover the statuary of me, and I'm going to donate it to the town. 
Uh, Mr. Edwards has made arrangements with Clay Boster to have plenty of barbecue there for everybody. Well, for so, uh, goodness sake, Slob, look who's coming up out there. Slob, uh, yeah. Well, good. <laughs> uh, I want every one of you to be there. Bring your children, too. Come one and come all. I thank you. Yeah, well, you got back, did you, Slob? Well, come in, Slob. I never was so glad to see anybody in my whole life. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. I just drove in town. I told her to drop by here and make a settlement with you the first thing I've done. Well, good. I grant you Everything's turning out fine. <laughs> well, it looks like Lum and Ebner's financial worries are over for a while. <laughs> we hope. Before we leave the air, ladies and gentlemen, I especially want you to hear about a letter we received recently. It came from a listener in Iona, Michigan, and it struck me as illustrating very clearly the value of Horlicks. Listen. Since an operation four years ago, I have been unable to digest ordinary milk, eggs, or vegetables. It was hard for me to know just what to eat, to get sufficient nourishment and satisfaction. Hearing your announcer describe Horlick's tablet on the Lum and Abner program, I thought I'd get a flask and try them. Soon I was using both the powder and the tablet, and I've never been as often since. I sleep like a top and my nerves are fine. And the doctor certainly was surprised when I last visited him. Said he'd never seen me looking better. <laughs> you can always count on me as a Horlick's user. You know, we receive many letters like this, telling about the value of Horlick's tablets, proving their easy digestibility and how beneficial they are for persons who have difficulty in digesting ordinary food. Literally thousands of such unsolicited letters are in our files. If your own digestion troubles you, get some Horlick's tablets from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor and see if they don't make all the difference in the world in supplying needed nourishment. And now... About that photograph of Lum and Abner, if you haven't done so yet, send in your name and address on the back of a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk, and you'll get one right away. Send your wrapper to Lum and Abner at the station to which you are now listening. Have you got that? But remember this, there are very few of these photographs left, so if you're going to get one, you'll have to hurry. This is Carlton Brickett, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick who now bid you all good night and good health.